Welcome back my YouTube family. In today's video, I am going to be doing a tour of my home theater. Now this is a very modest home theater. It only sits about three people. Um, the width is 11 feet, six inches. The length is about 12 feet, 11 inches. So there's not much room. And so I had to make some very conscious decisions as far as seating, as far as screen size, and, and other, other little factors. But uh, this video is going to be basically broken down into my video um, equipment, my AVR, my amps, my speakers, what I did for acoustics, furnishings, um, controllers, and then a couple of miscellaneous items. So, um, yeah, so give me about 10 minutes and I'll show you what $10,000 did for me as it relates to my home theater. I'm going to start off with the projector, which is a BenQ HT3550. Uh, retail was about $1,700 when it first came out. I think I got it for about $1,600 that ship, shipping taxes, everything like that. And it really is the star of the theater. I have it ceiling mounted on a shelf um, that I just grabbed from Lowe's, just the regular stock shelf. And I have it mounted upside down with the peerless um, ceiling mount. It's a low profile mount, works great, has plenty of adjustments, and uh, pretty much will keep that projector stabilized throughout all of the loudness, all of the subwoofer, all of the banging, all the wall shaking. Um, the screen of the picture that's on the screen does not shake at all. Speaking of screens, I'm using a silver ticket, 16 by 9 ratio, 110 inch screen. The main listening position, or MLP, is about eight feet away from the screen. The 110 inch screen is the perfect size for this particular room. I was fortunate enough where I didn't have to run any type of extra circuitry or anything like that. Everything that's plugged into this room um, is pretty much well plugged up into the house circuitry that came with the house. My main AVR is a Yamaha RX A3050. It's a nine channel um, AVR, but it also has two extra channels of processing, but you need an external amp uh, for that. And it runs my basic seven channel speakers on the bottom. It does all my room calibration. It has Dolby Atmos, uh, DTSX, and also some of its own effects for height. You have four speakers that are in the ceiling. Um, and these provide what's called a height effect. So when it's raining, it sounds like it's raining from the ceiling, helicopter going over airplanes, just all type of atmospheric type sounds, which really makes the audio stand out tremendously. Um, with those four height speakers, I am using a old um, AVR that I had, which is a Pioneer VSX. 815k it has 5.1 analog input and so what i do is that i take the four heights out of the pre-outs of the main avr into the pre-ends of the secondary avr and i run everything raw no effects no timing no correction anything like that and i'm just using it as a straight four channel app and finally for my subs i am using a behringer nu6000 it's a two channel um, 6,000 watt amp. Uh, the newer model is NX6000. You can't really find the NUs anymore, but it's the same thing. It has DSP in it, um, so you can set crossovers and things like that, so you can use those amps for your um, subwoofers or whatever you're using it for. For the left channel, I'm running the left channel to my 18-inch um, custom-built subwoofer, and for my right uh, channel, I'm using that for the three bass shakers that I have connected to my chair. For my left and right front loudspeakers, I'm using the Emotivo uh, T2s. Uh, these things are a beast. Um, and for my center, I'm using the C2 Plus. And for my four surrounds which is my left surround right surround my rear left and rear right i'm using the b1 pluses all these speakers are timber matched and again it's by emotivo uh, i think the series is called air motive for my height speakers i'm using some relatively inexpensive um, speakers i got off amazon they're the mica m-8c in ceiling speakers they do have aimable tweeters I just do not see a reason to upgrade them. They're full range. 
They do a great job. Uh, just really magical speakers for the price point. For me, they provide the full Atmos experience and I just do not have any complaints. My main subwoofer is a beast. It has an 18 inch subwoofer made by Dayton Audio called the Ultimax. Um, I got a flat pack from parts to go, which is about four cubic feet. It's a sealed sub and you put all this thing together, you glue it and I painted it and I have it sitting on this heavy duty uh, mat, rubber mat to keep it from sliding. But when I say it packs a punch, it's getting 3000 watts from my main sub amp and, um, and <laughs> it, it, it rumbles the house. Now again, I have everything calibrated so it provides a, a very good movie watching experience. Also, uh, when you wanna listen to music, but yeah, this thing is, is it's, it's a beast. Even though I only have one main subwoofer, I still consider the room as a 7.2.4. Seven being the seven uh, base layer speakers, Point two being how many subwoofers you have, and then the point four being how many height speakers you have. I say point two because under each one of my theater seats, I have what's called bass shakers or tactical transducers. I think it's one of the best upgrades that you could do in your, your theater uh, outside of a couple of more things. But yeah, I mean, they really work well. And so if you haven't heard of bass shakers before, then check them out because you'll be surprised. So I did say that the bass shaker was one of the, you know, best things that you can invest in, but also another hidden gem is acoustical treatment. It is so important. <laughs> so on the walls, you see I have these two by four panels. Um, I have six of them, well, five on the walls and then one in the ceiling, which is called a cloud. And what they do is they catch reflections or they eliminate echo in the room. I'm actually recording this video in the theater now. And as you can tell by my voice, there's hardly any echo um, in the recording. That's because these things are just raw insulation, uh, which is like rigid fiber, two inch fiber insulation. And I just have them wrapped in felt. And you will be surprised, they're just hanging up here, just like pictures, two screws and I hang them on the wall. It really takes all of that reflection and all of that, you know, echo out of a room. And that way, when you're playing your music or you're playing the audio for your movies or whatever the case is, that you don't get all of that mess. You get pure speaker joy. My seating is by Octane Seating. Uh, the series is called the Charger XS300. Um, it's a three seat configuration. With these particular type of professional home theater seating, you can be, it can be totally customizable. It's whatever your room would allow you to do. They can have wedges in them, arcs, they can do the L's. Uh, it just, it's just really customizable. The quality of these seats are superb. Um, the price was about $1,700, $1, somewhere around there. But in my opinion, it was well, well worth it. We talked a little bit about sound reflections, but you also have reflections from your um, video as well. And so my screen is wrapped in this velvet. I just got a roll of velvet from Amazon. Uh, got some curtain rods and some safety pins and put this thing together to mask all around, around the screen. It really looks like the screen is floating when the lights are off. Um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any reflections on the ceiling, so I painted my ceiling black. And then as you can see, I have this area rug that's in front of the screen as well that also um, counsels, counsels out the light reflection. So everything matters, even to the ceiling fan that you can see that, you know, that I made sure that it was jet black as well. I painted the walls a dark gray. There's not much decor in the room at all, but, um, but what I do have, I feel like that it fits the room well. My main streaming device is the Amazon Fire Cube. I chose the Fire Cube because it does have some remote features um, that is not standard on the regular Fire Sticks. Um, I do have an HTPC um, where I use that for things like movie watching that I might download from the internet or browsing the internet or playing demos of the PlayStation 4. Pretty much where all I need for um, inputs.
And of course, the home theater is definitely smart. <laughs> uh, I'm using the Smart Things uh, controller. That's the home hub controller. I'm using that actually for my whole entire house. Um, but I can do things like press a button and the projector will come on, The both the AVRs will come on, the light will go off, the fan will come on low, the AC will be set to a certain temperature. So all of those things I can program uh, with my home home hub smart things through the app and then for my basic remote um, i'm using the harmony hub again the harmony hub is connected to smart things so you know it's a lot of configuration in between those two but the majority of the time i'm just using this button that's on the outside of the door just to press the button to turn on the theater set my main input and then using that same button again to turn everything off um, definitely check out some of my other videos that i'll be doing a series on setting up smart home um, also setting up the different devices that you need and so just be looking out for that series that's coming out soon along with some other series that I've been working on. So I appreciate you all sticking around for this video. If you want to see how I set up these speakers, then make sure you check out this video. Then also, if you want to see how the room was actually set up from scratch, then there's a video on Sharon She's So Fabulous channel that you can check out as far as when we actually uh, redid this room. And that's a great video as well to show how all of the connections and everything is made. But this, again, was just an overview of each piece of the equipment and how it all works. So again, I really appreciate you all sticking around for this one. If you have any comments, then make sure you leave it in the comment section. If you like this video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. Again, as always, thank you for watching. Hey.